you would think it's strange that uh, if someone passed from the small town of uh, Brownsville, Tennessee, that would have such an impact on the rugby league community. But that was certainly the case today with the news of the passing of the, uh, well, the magnificent Tuna Turner. And what a life and what a human being. And if you look at rugby league, like the rise and rise, the extraordinary rise of rugby league from the eight, late 80s into the early 90s, I tell you what, it had as much to do with Tuna Turner, her talent, her charisma, as, you know, as much as the, uh, the players themselves. And uh, we get a bit of a tribute. But firstly, last year I caught up with John Quayle. Uh, to talk about Tuna Turner. Who approached Tuna Turner or the manager, Roger Davies? When the agency first, Hertz Walpole, came up with what you get is what you see, the words and everything were fine. And they kept trying to get somebody from Australia, a young entertainer, to sing it. So it was not about Tina at all at that stage. Anyhow, he said, we'll think about it. He rung Jim Walpole and said, OK, if you want to do it, I've got a day in London that if you want to film over there, thinking we wouldn't go ahead with it. What convinced her? Well, I think we convinced Roger. He saw the change in image. He saw the good-looking players that we had, mm. the toughness of the game. Well, the first part of it was finding... We had to find one player. I was fortunate that Andrew, Eddie Nows, was playing in London. But I was good friends with Gavin Miller. And I said to Gavin, I want you to help him. I said, you've just got to get Andrew, Eddie Nows, and to London on this day. And I get to London. He said, John, we have a problem. Andrew's game was snowed out on the Saturday. It's replaying on the Wednesday and they won't release it. But he said, don't worry, John. As usual, I fixed it for you. He said, I've got you two footballers. He said, me and Cliffy Lines. <laughs> and I know that when Jim and I were briefing Tina the night before at apartment and all that, I've shown videos of the games and all that sort of thing. And I said, Tina, they're tough. Uh, we're Patty. When Tina walked in, she didn't shake hands. She looked at them. She hugged them. Gavin got up and said hi. Cliffy couldn't talk. He never talked the whole time of the filming. He was just in awe of Tina. And it went around. It went on national, international television. International at 7 television. O'clock, and we thought, that's it. It's a wonderful commercial. I mean, w w what convinced her to sign a multi-year deal? Roger rings and says, we're going to a song that's going to be produced at the end of the year on a new album of Tina's. I think it's been written for sport. How did you find Tina? We only ever signed the one contract. She only ever asked for mangoes. I remember the, the masking to say, do you think Tina would go up on the Harbour Bridge? She went up there with a sound operator, security guard in high heels, she loved every minute of it. And then again, things like that, Matthew, were unique and different. I remember the 93 grand final where she was on the field with the Broncos. Yeah. And full well, time, what a great sport. It was good for her, but certainly great for the league. Down to the, the genius of uh, John Quayle and his connections with her uh, manager, uh, Roger Davies. Uh, boys, the first one that came out, of course, in 1989, what you get is what you see. Let's have a quick look and we'll have a uh, discussion about it. Now, boys, do you remember like, when that hit? It was like, as Quayley said, I think it got shown in the first day, they were really nervous the night before. Uh, they thought there'd be a lot of blowback, but 50 countries around the world that were shown in the first week and saying, you know, it was just a world first on how to promote a sport. Oh, well, it was fantastic. I reckon I might have been 15 or 16 when it came out. I fell in love with the game and then you get a campaign later. I think cricket might have had come on Aussie, come on or whatever, but yeah. that was... That was something that was so special and you saw all the boys in a different... I think it's the first time I saw players off the footy field, you know, yeah. and their personality. Well, a lot of that stuff, you see the vision, they didn't know what they were filming. There was top secret. The only people who knew and sworn to secrecy was John Quayle, Ken Arthurson, Cliffy and, uh, and Gavin Miller. And they only knew at the very last, the last second. The day before 
that there was touch and go whether it was going to be released because a couple of high-powered figures in the rugby league media got in touch with John, uh, Ken Arthurs and said, you're joking, aren't you? Like a, a rock and rolling grandmother to promote rugby league? You've got to be kidding. And uh, there was really touch and go and Quayley said, Arco, let's just go through with it. Yeah. So it's amazing. Now, let's, of course, the second year, as, said, uh, as Quayley said before, they uh, produced a new album, Simply the Best. Boys, this one certainly took them to yeah, another level again. You sort of always remember. So it sort of took the game from working class sort of knockabouts to eastern suburbs. No, well, it... it, it, it <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it showed, like you said, Gordy, it showed a different side to them. You know, we've got the, the attractive blokes. I mean, if she... If we did something similar now, it would be us. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, we'd, be the, yeah. we'd be the new version. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who yeah. would be the pop star, you reckon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it was like... The, yes. It's arguably the best campaign for any well, sport. Well, it still gives you goosebumps, doesn't yeah. it? When yeah. you watch it. This is the, that was the year I first started playing footy, and that's one of the things that I remember most, because that yeah. was when I really, like was obsessed with rugby league. Mm. You know, if I missed a game on telly or whatever or my team lost, I'd have the shits deluxe. That's that's yes. what got me into footy. Absolutely. Now, Gordy, you met like, the 1993 grand final? So, 1993, obviously, that was the campaign and I was lucky enough to play in the grand final. We got beaten and she sung the song with the Broncos and come over to say good day to us and, you know, say commiserations or whatever. But it was funny, Matty, because I was in the dressing room. There was a massive commotion before the game in the tunnel. And I got up to see what it was, and it was Tina in the tunnel. It's the first time I've ever been distracted. That's how, that's how big I think she was of a star. That's yeah. what, like, every rugby league player, that would have been their favourite song. And, yeah. and then that's what I remember about the game. I actually remember Tina. I don't remember too much, but... Um, no offence yeah. to the other... Oh, look, in the sax player. How good was oh, he? Oh, he was good. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you play sax. Yeah. Yeah. Because we, oh. we had the hoodoo gurus. Oh, what is he doing? And we had... Uh, oh, you got that outfit today, yeah. Brian. I do. We had Thomas, <laughs> Thomas Keneally. You know, we yeah. had all those other ones. <laughs> yeah. You know, that, I don't know why we just kept, didn't continue yeah. doing that, this. Well, I'll tell you what, um, and I know your man Joel Kane on your radio show said it today. Grand final night, you know, like, you just it do a tribute. Because at, at the moment, like... So, if you get on Foxtel, there's a great documentary on Tina Turner's life. Because a lot of people, you know, um, to the younger viewers, wouldn't know the ins and outs and the details of her life. And the other one is Tina the Musical, which is travelling around Australia. It's in Sydney at the moment. I tell you, it is insane. You've got to go and see it. it, it me and my wife, like, we're musical theatre heads. I know it sounds crazy, but we are. <laughs> One of those people. Yeah. We've seen it twice. Yeah. It is so yeah. good. Oh, we're, you're we're doing, you were doing the nut bush out there. Far <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. oh, you were good. No, 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 no. You were very good. No, no. Oh, dear, dear, dear. no that, was, that, was, that was the bus <laughs> stop. What was he doing? I was doing the bus stop. <laughs> you, but that was shitty limits. <laughs> <laughs> but that there, like, just shows what a great sport. Like, John, John Quayle was saying they were filming all day. And you imagine she'd have gone, oh, enough. Yeah. And then someone flippantly said, you know what would have been a great shot? Put Tina on top of the Harbour Bridge. And she said, well, let's do it. And they said, oh, but, yeah, we'll have to put, harness you up. And, yeah. and he said, don't worry about it. Like, you imagine how hard that would have been to get someone oh. up there. She just said, I'll do it. So it just shows what a yeah. great sport. But honestly, Tina the Musical. Give it a Good. go. It's, it's yeah. the, how many stars? It's the best. How many, how many stars? In Marcus how many stars? Oh, 20 stars. Is it? State it's, Theatre? It's at the uh, uh, Royal Theatre. Is in it Sydney. better than uh, Jersey Boys? Because I know you see Jersey Boys. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Tap Dogs. I've seen, you said you like Tap Dogs too. I yeah. enjoy Tap Dogs. Cats. This was a new cast. Tina, Tina, power ranking. Tina. Okay, I go with this. I go, Neil Diamond the musical just come out. Very, Solid. very good. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, just recently saw Rocky Horror again. Love Rocky Horror. Yeah. Mm. But Tune of the Musical Dang. is there. Yeah, wow. And, and what about Thunder from find... Down Under? Thunder from Down Under. <laughs> <laughs>